Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. On this video, you are gonna get a quick look of exactly what is macroeconomics. So what exactly is macroeconomics? If you're launching into your studies of macroeconomics, you're probably going to want to know, like, okay, what am I exactly going to study? And if you're just a, a person who's really interested in having a thorough, more thorough understanding of the politics in your particular country, understanding macroeconomics is really important. And this video is not designed to give you a whole bunch of examples. It's designed to give you just exactly what is meant, what is covered in a macroeconomics course. And when somebody says, oh, yeah, you know, we got to talk, talk about the macroeconomic situation here and in a country, you, you'll have a better understanding of what that means, okay? If you're interested in knowing more information about any of these topics, check out the rest of the videos that are posted on my YouTube channel. Um, this channel has over 300 videos covering the entirety of macroeconomics, microeconomics, international economics, and development economics. So if you're looking for more specific information, check out one of the other videos. All right. A normal macroeconomic course of study would have six different units. One would be called the level of overall economic activity, just kind of a fancy way of just saying, like, okay, how do we know how much, is, how much economic activity is going on in a particular country? That is usually, and um, well, not usually, it's almost always um, sort of gauged or measured by something called gross domestic product, or GDP. And that GDP is something that is used regularly to try to figure out if the economy is growing, if the economy is shrinking, how, if it is growing, how fast is it growing. And you may have heard about these things in the news like gross domestic product, gross national product, green GDP. You may have heard of GDP per capita, nominal GDP, <laughs> real GDP. All of those things are covered in this particular topic. And if you're interested in more information on what those are, check out the rest of the videos I have. Uh, posted to give you more thorough information, okay? The second unit of study will be something called aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Aggregate, don't get tripped up by that word. It's just a fancy way of saying total. So you look at the total demand and the total supply um, in an economy. Demand, of course, are those things that are purchased, things that people want. That could be by consumers. That could be by businesses. That could be by firms. Uh, rather, by the government. It could be for imports and exports. And supply is just to look at the total amount of things, like goods and services that are produced in a particular uh, economy. And of course, these two things will create a, the, an aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram, which of course is the backdrop of your studies of all of macroeconomics. Um, but though, so, so that's why it comes up early in your studies because it's super duper important to understand how to express all of this information on a diagram, okay? The third unit of study would be something called low unemployment. And actually, governments want to have a certain level of unemployment in their country at any given time. Um, and we can talk about why that is in further videos. But unemployment, the best unemployment rate in a country, the healthiest unemployment rate in a country that is a fully developed economy like anyone, any economy in, in, in Europe or the United States or Australia, Canada, is 5%. Governments strive to have a 5% unemployment rate. Um, because that way they can they can hold back economic growth, okay? And we'll talk about what that means in one second, okay? Another area of study is something called the low and stable rate of inflation. And low and stable rate of inflation, what does inflation mean? Inflation means an overall rise in the price levels. It means a rise an overall rise in the average price level of things in an economy. And that'll happen anytime there is something called economic growth. So economic growth, which is the fifth area of study, is intimately related with the rate of inflation because if more things are purchased this year, that means there's an increase in demand and that's going to drive up the prices of things and that's going to create a rise in the overall average price level of things, which would create inflation. And what governments want to have is a 2% rate of inflation, okay? So governments strive to have a 2% rate of inflation, 2% economic growth, and 5% unemployment, okay? So a, the study of a lowest stable rate of inflation is really important because actually governments really, 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 really want to keep um, inflation at a known level, which is always somewhere around 2%, okay? The way they're going to do that is they're going to manage the economy 
um, by keeping growth right around 2% as well, because economic growth means an increase in the overall economic activity, overall economic activity in a country at a given time. And 2% growth would mean that there's 2% more things purchased this year than there were last year, which would, as you can imagine, push up prices, which would create inflation. So this relationship between economic growth and uh, um, the stable rate of inflation, of course, is intricately uh, locked into one another, okay, intricately related. All right. And then the last area of study is something called equity in the distribution of income. And this is where, you know, the, the, uh, the dinner table blows up at, at the holiday, <laughs> during the holidays. This is when the old people and the young people get in arguments. This is when kids come back from university and start arguing with their parents because equity in the distribution gets to the, the core of economics. And that's basically like, what is the role of the government in society um, to take care of its people? Is it to take care of the wealthy? Is it to take care of the poor? Is it to make sure that the wealthy strive and, 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 and succeed so that they create more jobs for the underclasses? And equity in the distribution of income is the study of how governments manage the income that they bring in, usually by taxing the wealthier segments of society, to distribute it via, not give it out, not hand it out, but distribute that income by creating services so that the poorer sections... Um, of an economy or of a society have as much of an equal opportunity to be successful as they should given the normal standards of what governments uh, perceive to be like a, a, a healthy way of living. Okay, so equity in the distribution of income is one thing that is hugely uh, uh, debatable and argued about not just by um, politicians but by economists as well. Okay, last little thing I want to say to you before you launch on to your studies of macroeconomics is that it is the government's job to be a good parent of the economy. And if you use the analogy that the government is the parent of an economy, just like parents are the parents of a household, then you'll have a very good understanding of the responsibility of the government. And basically, they can't win either way. They're always going to be right and always going to be wrong because no matter what they do, some segment of society is going to be upset. And governments have two main constituents in their population. doesn't matter the country. Those are suppliers, those are businesses, and those are demanders and consumers. And those two children need to be cared for equally but they can't always be cared for the same way all of the time. And that's where you get the left side of the political spectrum and the right side of the political spectrum. Okay, So government's job is to be as good a parent as they possibly can for a country. And of course, those, those parents that are usually politicians, right? The parents of an economy are politicians who get elected. So they, also, of course, manipulate the populace in order to have a better chance of keeping their jobs as politicians so they can drive their own um, political agendas, which, of course, is going to be something that's going to be debated, and you get to the heart of, of course, politics when you start studying economics, okay? And then lastly, just keep this in your mind, I'd just like to mention this always, there are four main objectives of any good parent, any good government, which is to have economic growth, a low level of employment, 5%, a low, le low and stable rate of inflation of 2%, and equitable distribution of income. Those are talked about all the time in economics classes as the main objectives of all economic uh, activity and an economy, and of course, it's the government that's in charge of monitoring all of that. Well, there you have it, my friends, a quick look at all the things you will study if you are entering in to a course on macroeconomics. Let me tell you something, economics informs you about the world around us because, as my old economics professor once said, there ain't no such thing as politics. It's all just economics, and I thought he was, whatever, trying to be cool. But it turns out it's pretty much the case because all political arguments in this world are based on a position of economic thought and understanding macroeconomics is going to arm you to understand the political framework of whatever country it is that you live in. All right, my friends, so congratulations on choosing this uh, course of study. It will inform you about everything and it'll never, ever, ever stop giving you the information you need to know in order to be an informed citizen of this world. All right, be good to yourselves out there, my friends. Be good to one another as well, and we'll talk to you in a bit.